Hello buddy, Insane Frame here and we're back with a continuation to beating Fallout Boards of Raider. This time however we're going to be setting our sights on Nuke World, so today is the day we ask, can you beat Fallout 4 Nuke World as a Raider? Full disclosure, I've never played Nuke World and don't know what to expect, however we will be using our character from our last video, Vernon Wells. This is actually the first time we have used the character after completing the main story, so already this is fairly unusual, but all the more exciting. Speaking of which, I've decided that Power Arm and the Fat Man will be allowed due to the enemies being much more tougher and using more effective weaponry on us. So without further ado, let's go on to the rules. We can use anything we can loot in Nuka World. Since this is a raider territory, it only makes sense that we can use whatever we find. No glitter exploits, no cheating or modding, and we're going to be playing on very hard difficulty. So with that, let's go on and start the run. We begin our playthrough immediately after making the Institute explode and turn to Desdemona who gives us a speech about the simps seeking freedom and our impact in the main commonwealth. But little do they know, everything has been set in place for us, but we get two level ups for our troubles because we completed the main story and we have a few options as to what we can spec into. But for more flexibility with our weapon choices and to save ammo, we go for the ranks two and three into big leagues, which allows us to deal 60% more weapon damage and a good chance of disarming our opponents, a very nice start indeed. We go to Diamond City to stock up on what we need for the road ahead, and as a quick recap, in case anyone hasn't seen the previous episode, we are wearing fully upgraded Raider armor, and our main weapons of choice are our fully upgraded 50 cal pipe rifle with a scope and a serrated poison switchblade for getting up close and personal. We can switch it up if need be, but it should be okay for the most part. We'll probably upgrade to something else later when we're in Nuka World. On our way to Nuka World, our intelligence service is fighting some gunners, we join in to make sure they are okay and take out a gunner commander, which is a excellent warm-up. We punish the gunners by capturing one of their checkpoints to prove a point, and our agents secure it. Well done, agents. As we journey, we test our metal against the Deathclaw, open fire and get our damage off. Then we wait and get a headshot, killing it. And then we find a second Deathclaw, but we're caught out in the open, so we use hit and run tactics, but it get a well-placed shot in its belly, killing it. I've got to admit that's quite a thrilling experience. I think we're good to begin our journey into Nuka World. We get to the entrance and it's overrun with gunners and since they've raised their hand to our agents they must be taken out. However, we start by firing at the Assaultron as it will try to close the gap the quickest to us, but it's Charles play to remove it from the firefight. We then start a headshotting frenzy to all the gunners in the area until they can no longer advance or shoot at us. Since their commander is still around, we scout around the side and pin down one of their marksmen on the rooftops. We approach on the enemy's flank and use Vats on their CO, who also gets a wonderful critical hit, allowing us to take her out without sustaining any damage at all. We read Kokela's orders and they were received by Colonel Cypress. Maybe he'll be a threat later, not sure, but we press on. Once inside the transit station, we meet Harvey and he's taken a bullet and says Raiders have overrun Nuka World. This is needless to say music to our ears as we now have some competition, which means we have to show them what we're made of. So just in case anyone is watching, we kill Harvey and ride the monorail. During the monorail ride, a Raider named Gage speaks to us and says Harvey was going to lead us into a death trap. Gage then throws down with us and we disembark from the train ride, accepting his challenge. Red Eye gives us a warm welcome as we enter the gauntlet and a bunch of turrets open and fire on us. How lovely. However, we take cover and look at the arcs of fire and one by one take out the turrets. The next area is not even a threat as we have traps and trip wires. However, we have four levels of sneak so we don't trigger any floor based traps. So we can just walk on through with no worries. Next up is three doors left to right. Mainly out of curiosity, we open them all up. But after some explosions, we're all good. We have to encounter high levels of radiation next and find a key before we die from radiation. However, we find the key on on the shelf and manage to get out of harm's way. In the next room, the Raiders have made a fatal flaw as we find a cooking station and produce many healing items, which is very nice of them. We sneakily take out some turrets in the next room for XP and stay out of danger. We then encounter a minefield and get a bunch of free mines, so thank you Raiders, but thanks to our sneak perk once again, we don't trigger any floor based traps. Anyway, we use some molotovs in the next room as it's filled with mylurx and not opting for walking along a flimsy wooden plank, we hunker down and use sneak attacks to ambush the ambushers. We level up in the process and gain big leagues rank 4, letting us do 80% more damage with melee weapons and we can now hit enemies in an arc in front of us, very very deadly in the right circumstances. The next obstacle is a gas chamber we have to turn four valves to stop the gas from making us suffocate, whilst rad roaches swarm us left right and centre. Our switchblade comes in handy and we take them out and get to the computer to switch off the gas, and then we open the door. 
Once through the door, we encounter some new enemies in the form of flying ant swarms. Needless to say, we take them out with some trouble, but they do go down like any other enemy. But then the raiders miss players. They have a great separating us from them, and we sneak attack them. But once we down one of them, we unfortunately can't loot their weapon to use against them, but at least we can move forward to the most spectacular thing thus far in Fallout. We see a raid boss in a dodger marina. It's beautiful, it's lovely. However, overboss Coulter challenges us, which is a fair challenge, because all in all he's in power armor in an open arena however we have gauge from earlier reach out to us via intercom and he places a squirt gun in one of the lockers and says that colt has rigged the fight to take no damage and we have to use the squirt gun to take down his defenses which gives us a fighting chance of beating him we enter the dodger marina and we sneak on in and give colt a squirt never thought i'd be saying that but we switch on over to our rifle and begin taking pop shots at him until he gets close and we squirt him again but we use that and deliver a critical headshot and we do one better and switch to our switchblade and deliver the finishing blow to him giving us the win in front of our future raiders and lieutenants gate says we're officially the overboss and he takes the job as our raider commander so everything worked out next is the overboss power armor we need to find a power armor frame before we can use it but we do pick up the pieces for later use but the torso deals energy damage to nearby enemies which is very good once our business concludes we go to the trade center in nuketown a guy named chip says about the power being switched back on and he's certainly onto something with that idea we speak to gage our first raider commander and he wants us to get the gangs to follow us as their new boss so we go and meet each and every gang boss so first up is nisha from the disciples she's annoying just gives bad vibes in general we go to the operators next and mags is much nicer to us and uses her manners which is excellent truly a yorkshire tea drinker well done mags mason is last he's not rude but our goals do align and all in all he seems pretty decent despite his wacky nature of his gang but we don't judge as their methods certainly seem effective and that's good enough for us we report back to our right hand man gage and he wants us claiming some territories for the gangs and extend their influence seems legit and since the disciples were rude to us we kill a few of their number to show them what for with our armor sorted and our tools primed it's time to go to the first area we go to the bottle facility and we follow the stream and sneak attack the new clerk we then hunker down on a rooftop and snipe two new clerk hunters leveling us up in the process we continue fighting down the Nuka River and see our prize that we want, which is a suit of power armor with the frame intact, which is an absolute must have for us. Continuing on and going deeper into the facility, we find some Assaultrons and put a couple of them down. We have another two Assaultrons and kneecap them and make them stay down. The roof is next and after some Mylurk Kings are dealt with thanks to some sneak attacks, we get Casey's passer, but we're not out of the woods yet as a Mylurk Queen spawns. Our persistent pays off and we finally down the Mylurk Queen with only three rounds remaining, which is too close. We go back to the terminal and unlock the door to claim our prize, a power armor frame for our overboss armor. And with our level up from earlier, we go to the blacksmith rank one. So we can upgrade our power armor's arms with optimized braces. This reduces action point costs for our power attacks, which is lovely. We also tack on a welded rebar on our torso for our overboss armor. Anyway, once back at the plant again, we take the fight to the Milux and stealthily use our switchblade to take them out. It's certainly hard work, but it does work out for us, and then we go to the flagpole and assign the operators to the settlement. We take the loot from the stash, and we're good for our next location. The next location on our journey is Safari Adventure. We stroll in and start shooting Gator Claws, which seem to be a variant of Death Claws, but we find a gentleman by the name of Sito. He introduces himself and asks for our help, since we need all the help we can get, and we agree. However, Sito unfortunately just glitches out so we go ahead and deal with a few gator claws anyway we find a duffel bag on top of a trailer find some keys and gain access to the trailer we also level up in the process and go ahead and get better criticals so now we do 50 percent more damage with critical hits which can come in real handy we search around and kill more gator claws which kind of reminds me of jurassic park with a nokia phone but with 7.62 millimeter rounds we then get access to the area beneath the main lobby and we find more gator claws including an albino gator claw along with his henchmen we use every last bit of ammunition we have on us and we have to use the switchblade again it takes a while but we do get the job done similar to the mylurks we use our switchblade on the remaining gator claws around the park but it's actually really effective because of the sneak attack damage we speak to sito and ask him to leave but we manipulate him he understands but gives us a wonderful new toy we get sito's shiny slugger a wonderful rocket powered baseball bat that refills our action points on a critical 
vocal hit, which is amazing. Lastly, we assign the pack Raider Gang to the hideout, as they seem like they would enjoy this area quite a lot. That's two locations down, three more to go. We go straight into the third area, Kitty Kingdom. When we get there, our jet bat speaks for itself, and we just carve through swarms of ghouls, and we even find a legendary missile launcher that does 25% more damage. Such a lovely find. After more ghouls are crushed, we go to the fun house, we go into a mirror maze, and we find a dead raider, which is no way to go out really, so we give him the respect he deserves and prop him up by the candles, respecting his corpse. Once our former raider friend is set, we have to jump on rotating platforms, and we go through some glowing tunnels. Then we get to an interesting room that's a makeshift arena. It is pretty cool as we just whack the ghouls to the ground, and once in the control room, the ghoul that's on the intercom is gone. After we leave, we go to the employee tunnels, we see Oswald talking to a ghoul. We burst through the door and then the poor guy, but Oswald is nowhere to be seen. But we level up and go for Blacksmith Frank 2. We go ahead and turn off the mist sprayers, but it doesn't work, so we go to the castle, taking out more forces as any Raider Warlord should. Once at the King Cola's court, we see Oswald on stage and he's received the gift of magic, so he says. He asks if we'd like to see some. Our response is we charge at him, walloping him in the face, then press the charge by using a haymaker of swings in bats from our rocket bat lovely oswald retreats to the roof so we go ahead and use the lift we go to charge oswald but get some interesting yet sad dialogue that oswald has been here for over 200 years and is clinging to false hope so it's in our best interest to put him down but we'll give him an honorable death Oswald isn't difficult to damage and we overpower him easily, but his forces are summoned, but we easily deal with them as we hit multiple enemies. We also jump down to cause more damage from the scaffolding, but Oswald fights bravely. However, since he keeps disappearing and reappearing, we do our own magic trick and remove his head from his body using a blunt object, and the head is nowhere to be seen, ladies and gentlemen. Oswald's loot is ours, we use his password to turn off the sprayers and go ahead and use the flagpole and assign the operators to secure the area. Another location down. We go back to base and upgrade our bat to be a weighted pink bat, which improves our damage output. It also matches our pink mohawk and a raider has to look the part after all. With some repairs and an upgrade to our bat, we move out to Galactic Zone. We see the robots and charge in, we do a good job at beating them down and our missile launcher comes in handy to take out some turrets. We even find an issue of Scab Magazine making speed skill checks easier. We explore a little bit, taking lots of robots down and we hit level 31. I decide we go back to the Commonwealth and we get the Intelligence Bobblehead and with our level up we go ahead and give ourselves plus one Intelligence, allowing us to spec into the Science perk for higher tier upgrades in the near future. We continue on and go to the Vault in Galactic Zone, we get robots and turrets alike trying to shoot us down, we attend the tour and go through the vault destroying everything and anything in our path and grabbing a few Star Cores in the process. Next up is the Theatre and we utilise our 50 cal pipe rifle like a puckish rogue and wipe out some defences which is wonderful. We deal with the Star Tender by sneak attacking him with a rocket bat and it goes beautifully. We go ahead and grab some of the star cores clearing the theater and we destroy more robots and get a level up and we go for science rank one giving us access to more mods. So with a few places down in galactic zone we get to my personal favorite area which reminds me a lot of robot wars a show that aired in the late 90s and early 2000s but nostalgia aside we fight some robots and destroy everything in sight turning all limb from limb which is hilarious. Although all good things must come to an end we go to Nuka Galaxy the last location on our list in this place and we follow a roller coaster and there's even a ufo that has a bunch of turrets we destroy the turrets with our good old pipe rifle and we even get to a cave environment there's a lot of chap and chapettes here and we do our damnedest to make it through we get a second wave of ufos with turrets and personnel but we take care of the robots with our rocket bat which is amazing and our rifle lets us take care of the turrets we level up from the encounter and go for science rank two make our way back to the main plaza and go to a control room accessing the terminal where we liberate the defenses and all is well. We then go to the flagpole and assign the pack to take over. They haven't stepped out of line yet, so we might as well let them have some territory. Now for the last location, we have to go to Dry Rock Gulch. We get a warm welcome by getting greeted by bloodworms and crickets. We speak to Sheriff Hawk and his buddies, and we have pieces of a safe combination that we're going to need. So with our task at hand, we begin. We explore and find one-eyed Ike and he challenges us to a duel and it's actually easy but quite fun. We return a toy horse back to its pen and get the first part of the save combination. Then we turn our attention to the saloon and to show them we mean business we destroy the barman and get his safe code, which to be honest is really easy. We go to the safe and unlock it, get the employee key giving us access to the minecart roller coaster. We defeat all the enemies inside and slay the queen blood worm which stops the infestation. But since the protectrons did not use their manners we go ahead 
ahead and destroy each and every one of them. It really is that simple, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, once all is said and done, we assign the pack here, as they certainly are effective in their methods, and this place kind of suits them with the saloon. With the final settlement under our thumb, we go to speak to our first commander, Raider Gage. He says he's impressed and that it's time to initiate our plans in the Commonwealth, which is an amazing idea and glory will be remembered, as well as Nora. We're directed to Shanks and his name reminds me of a certain pirate emperor. Anyway, Shanks wants us to hit a settlement and considering his prior position, we will consider him our second Raider commander. We decide to hit a settlement with the operators and it's time the Commonwealth pays for its treachery. We shall rule indefinitely. The railroad shall keep a tight grip in the shadows, making this the perfect plan. We enter the Commonwealth with a bang and out on our arrival, which is excellent. We meet with the gang and charge straight on in, breaking everyone's jaws in the process, making this quick, easy and efficient gaining us a foothold in the Commonwealth. We also level up and go for rank 3 of science so we can upgrade our equipment across the board. But before we leave, we're missing something in our lives and we go ahead and grab dog meat. As raiders have attacked dogs and only the best doggo will do for us and dog meat is a fluffy boyo so we welcome it into the fold with open arms. We also go ahead and upgrade our armour, we install tesla coils so we can now damage nearby enemies. Combined with our torso's legendary effect, our enemies will be electrocuted into oblivion, making us a nightmare in melee. We also get dog meat some armour and a lovely bandana so he's the best raider doggo in all the land and he is so precious. We report back to Shanks and this time we go and ransack a settlement of ghouls. We do some sniping and break morale to let the people know we mean business. We then charge in to further break the settlement's morale as an 8 foot tall hydraulic raider swinging a jet powered bat, electrocuting anyone nearby. It's certainly effective as we hit like a literal truck. There's not a lot the settlement can do against us, they recognise the error of their ways and agree to supply us, all according to plan. We meet second raider commander Shanks again and he says that some raiders disagree with us, which is excellent. We've drawn them out and they shall suffer. Once in the settlement, we see the raiders coming, they threaten us foolishly. We manage to beat them down with no effort and they fail to stand against us and get shown the true raid away. Dogmeat is a good doggo and holds Sinner so we can destroy him and put him in the ground along with its enforcement personnel. He was indeed foolish as we fight for a cause and glory. We go ahead and take another settlement, it is surprisingly easy as no one is there and it's ours for the taking. We get the main event and take the sunshine tidings and get to work with the place by clearing out the ghouls which is child's play. We then get the raider warlord perk and we have achieved our goal in the wasteland which was trivial. Next up is supplies for our raider camps, but we level up and get blacksmith rank 3, which is absolutely marvellous, which will allow us to upgrade more of our equipment. As a raider warlord, we attack another settlement, they fall very rapidly, so we decide to hit another as they were pathetic with their resistance against us. The next settlement falls even faster, almost instantaneously, it's actually quite embarrassing as their defence are non-existent, and they lie in defeat against us. We send Shanks to oversee the operations of the commonwealth at Sunshine Tidings, he'll work well with the raider railroads grasp on things and we also upgrade our rocket bat so it now deals bleed damage stacking with our tesla coils and torso piece so we're hitting in melee like a freight train now Abifi Farm gets the pleasure of testing our new bat and Blake comes full circle as he's helpless in front of us. He's all talk and no action, ladies and gentlemen. Next, we make sure Sunshine Tidings is completely secure and producing ample resources for us, making an excellent raider facility overseen by Shanks. We also level up from building so much and we go ahead and grab Rifleman rank 4, so we deal 80% more damage with non-automatic rifles and ignore 25% of the target's armour, as well as a chance to cripple limbs, which is superb. With the Commonwealth under our control, our new base and raid command station there, backed by the railroad's intelligence, we can focus on matters in Nuka World. We travel to the power plant, Mags, Mason and William see us there, dog meat in tow who's such a good boy. Anyway, we get down to business and Misha, the leader of the Disciples, has turned against us and gone traitor, which is excellent, as we can test our gang's loyalty and make an example of Nietzsche. With our elite raider boss squad, we charge in, destroy all all the disciples outside. We have the numbers and firepower as well as a cute doggo so they didn't stand a chance to begin with. Once inside we utilise stealth like a horror movie villain looming around and one shotting the traitors one by one. And even in open engagements we are the warlord as they fall at our hands. Once at the rooftop, we ended the few disciples left, then we watched Nisha, not even lifting a finger, as our commanders proved their worth to us by killing Nisha before our very eyes. They have proven themselves worthy of our cause and earned their respective raider commander titles under us. We get the keys to Nisha and go into the power room and we think of Nora, where all this began with Kellogg. We still have our wedding ring on and we press the button lighting up the park, remembering better times before the war. 
We look at the fireworks going off on all its glory. And before we conclude, we have one more stop to make. And that's with First Raider Commander Gage. He says we've accomplished everything and we've done exceptional. So we go ahead and get two additional perks, which is Ace Operator, which improves our sneak attack damage and our sneaking ability in the shadow, which is great for our pipe rifle. And lastly, Pack Alpha, which increases our defense by a flat amount and increases our damage with melee weapons and arms. And with that, Nuke World is completing. Answer the question, can you beat Nuke World as a raider? And the answer is yes. Yes, you can. All right. That was an amazing challenge. It just blew it out of the water. So thanks to everyone that asked this challenge. It's really cool. This was easily the most fun challenge today, and it just exceeded my expectations in many ways. More than one, in fact. And the fact that we became a Raider Warlord and had a whole new system in the Commonwealth was awesome and just added so much new flavor to the system it's also one of the few challenges where a character gets to be level 25 plus so being able to hit the higher levels and get them perks and use the weapons and armor mods just in general is really really awesome and just decent this is the first time i've ever done nuke world as part of a challenge that's really cool adding that notch to the belt and it's just amazing so thank you all for recommending it thank you for being really patient and being awesome with everything anyway we've all said and done the next video will be can you beat fallout 4 as a pyro from team fortress 2 it is going to be fun and awesome and to all you people watching just thank you thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video it means an awful lot and yeah i just can't thank you guys enough anyway like the video if you wish comment down below you're all very much amazing you're lovely human beings and subscribe if you're new Anyway, this is Insane Frame, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves. You're all fantastic people. And yeah, thank you for watching and being really patient. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.